You know, we here today with the brother Kamal Johnson, you know, Mr. Hudson, Mr. Mayor, young, <laughs> young, young, young black mayor out there, Hudson, you know, and in charge, you know. So, um, yeah, like I said, I definitely appreciate you coming through last minute. You know, we're trying to pretty much get these conversations started to empower our young brothers, our young youth that's, you know, that, 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 that need to see hope, yeah. you know, that need to see that they can be somebody instead of just, you know, hustlers and rappers and, you know what I'm saying, um, you know, uh, whatever, whatever, whatever else that, that, that they stereotype us as, you know what I'm saying? So, yeah. like I said, I, I, I definitely appreciate you coming through the show last minute, but what, what we're trying to do here, we're trying to build, we're trying to build relationships, build networks, you mm -hmm. know, build our cities together. You know, we both upstate Albany, so we right here, we got cities right here close to each other. And, mm -hmm. um, yeah, like I said, I definitely appreciate you coming yeah, through, man. bro. Yeah, Thank, man, thanks for having me. Yeah. You know, I was tuned in to, you know, the last episode. Um, I was hearing um, you had my boy Jay on, and right. um, a lot of the players in the game, so it was good to be able to finally, you know, make this connection and mm -hmm. come on. Absolutely, had, 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 had that platform, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And, you know, you know we happen to have mutual people to your brothers, one of my men yeah, I grew yeah. up with. So that was that was a phone call away. I said, he said, I've been trying to connect y'all. So I told him that as long as we all working, we're gonna connect. Yeah. Either one day or the other. As long as we're doing the right thing, doing what we're supposed to be doing, mm -hmm. we're gonna stay connected, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, he was telling With me powers. for a while I mm -hmm. needed to, you know, connect with y'all. Mm -hmm. And um, mm -hmm. you know, we only forty minutes away. Right, so right. um, you know, the more that, you know, we as a culture can celebrate what each other is doing, the better. Absolutely, I agree. We was actually out there, me and my, my pops and um my wife, we was out there last week. We was on uh, what's that, Warren Street, the, yeah, the yeah. arts and everything mm -hmm. like that. And my father was like, I like this this is nice right this area. You know, 'cause my uh, my stepmother was out there in the hospital for me and she wasn't mm -hmm. you know, she passed away uh, about a year ago. So he was out there Hudson. He said he just like he liked the energy out there, you yeah. know. Yeah, we're, you know, we're up and coming city. Um, on Warren, on the bottom of Warren, we got our um, Black Lives Matter mural. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we did it different than all the other cities. Mm -hmm. um, we had a bunch of uh, black artists and they, we put a spin on it. It's mm -hmm. like, you know, it's our city is entrenched with art. Mm -hmm. So we wanted to highlight that in mm -hmm. the mural. And um, also having it be a, a bridge between the black community and our business district so mm, um, you know our kids of color come out and see that and you know feel proud and know you know where their city stands mm -hmm. every day that's nice that's nice like i said i went out there you know we saw the arts and we was like this is nice nice vintage look mm -hmm. and i thought of production because you know i got the production covers so i'm like we had to shoot a, maybe a movie or something out here one day you know got that vibe like yeah and everything was cool all the people was friendly i said the clothes fashion book i said this, mm -hmm. is, this is nice right it's, it felt like it felt like we was in the city somewhere in the village section or something yeah in, in the city so i said like, this is real nice you know yeah, it's a, um it, it's turning into that type of vibe hudson mm -hmm. has gone through so many different phases mm -hmm. um especially with gentrification. Mm -hmm. um, so now where I come in is I want to try to balance the gentrification with equity for, you know, the local people mm -hmm. and make sure that we are able to remain and live comfortably, mm -hmm. you know, not paycheck to right. paycheck where, right. you know, something happens, an emergency happens, and it's literally a disaster right. for you financially mm -hmm. um, because everything you're working towards is going to pay your rent. Mm -hmm. and, Mm -hmm. um, bills just like the pandemic we just went through that was kind of like a, a warning right mm -hmm. now it's like now now it could happen now we know it could happen so now we have to put ourselves in a position to, to to be good either way right yeah <laughs> and, the, and the pandemic you know showed us a lot it showed us that anybody could be vulnerable mm -hmm. um, so we had a lot of people who um, were like you know why are people getting government help and you know they were really um, problematic with how they looked at other people, mm -hmm. but they ran into that same vulnerable state, mm -hmm. and now they're like, man, we need help from the government to right, come right. in mm -hmm. and, um, you know, fix things. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I, I saw because most of the big businesses was going for them grants and everything. Now, yeah. business, we found mm -hmm. out later. We like, oh, we could have fucking, I didn't know that. By the time we tried to apply, a lot of us tried to apply, so oh, the, the big companies took that money already. Yeah. I'm like, the, you know, the big the big corporation company already got millions and stuff do out of dollars out of the out of the SBAs and the, yeah. and the PPPs and stuff like that. So by the time we come up with ours, like, oh, it's too late, you know? And that's why, you know, it's important to invest in the community and it's important to vote. And when you vote in, people always think, you know, you're just voting for um, the presidential election, mm -hmm. but those smaller elections on the ballot mm -hmm. uh, mean a lot mm -hmm. because those are the people that are going to help shape mm -hmm. your communities and they're going to be the ones who 
fight for you know what you're looking for mm. so for me coming in um to politics like i wanted to be that person that's bringing things that are going to touch people on the ground mm. so when i was out knocking on doors and stuff especially in black and brown communities mm. people all said you know the same thing they're like it don't matter who's in charge, you know, I'm still going to be in this situation or mm. it's not going to matter because no one's going to do anything to affect, um, I love you know, the situation. yeah. Mm. So for me, every initiative that I put out is directly affecting the people. Like we gave away, um, grants for minority businesses mm. and, um, veterans and women mm. and, we gave away, you know, $100,000 across, I think, 12 businesses, and they mm. were people that usually would not have this opportunity. There's mm. people that we see them online and on social media and everywhere, and they got talent, but there's nobody investing in them. Right. And um, we gave them, you know, this chance to get over the hump, mm. get their um, business polished, and really showcase what they can do. Mm -hmm. And um, that's like, you know, one of the initiatives that I was like proud of to be able to do in mm. my first mm. 10 months. Mm. And then to be able to partner with uh, the Spark of Hudson, which is a local agency, and Humanity Forward um, with Andrew Yang, who's the former presidential candidate. And that's all Hudson programs? Yeah. Okay. Can, can y'all like partner with Albany programs and stuff like <laughs> I that? I mean, or? I would love to mm. partner okay. with Albany. Um, you know, I've talked to... Um, some of the elected officials mm. up here and um you know we always talked about doing stuff together mm. um i think where albany's kind of issue lies mm. is that um there's a lot of factions doing um great work mm. and fighting for important things but there's no like unity right everything's spread apart yeah That's my thing so too. Like, it's like, yeah, everybody's scattered mm -hmm. everybody got the same similar initiatives but everybody's so scattered. yeah mm. So, like, you know, having everybody, you know, together on one mission is important because there's numbers across all these agencies and all these uh, community groups. And, like, that's where all the power lies is in those numbers. The numbers and the data, right? Because mm -hmm. I, I even saw you, you know, when it was... um. Excuse me. I think I I saw you when it, when it was rallying. You did a, you was in the rallies, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I saw that. I said, okay, he stepped out, too, like that. That's good because a lot of times, you know, some some people in position don't really like to be out there in the field. I think it's like called what conflict of interest or something like that. Right? Yeah, I mean, I think it's an excuse that politicians use. Mm -hmm. um, and for me, I never want to be like the stereotypical politicians. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't want to be, um, you know, the guy that's always in the suit with the right. blue tie and saying the same right, old right. things. Right, um, right. So for me, you, you're you going to always know where I stand on issues because I'm going to be on the front lines with you. Mm -hmm. And I and I told, you know, the people in my community, you don't ever have to protest in front of my office because I'm going to be out here on the street <laughs> right, right, with you. Right, right, right. And um, it's important mm -hmm. because, you know, they elected me to answer the call for some of these issues. So mm -hmm. I can't get there and then say, like, oh, well, you know, it's a fine line. Mm -hmm. Like, no, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm out here. And, um, you know, we're going to fight together for the right things. And that's why, you know, Hudson didn't have some of the issues mm -hmm. with um, looting and different things like right. that because the people want to protect me in this position mm -hmm. as well. So, so, you, so you, you, you didn't have that issue with going back, you know, the, the, uh, you know, the, the barricades in front of your offices? Yeah, and no, like no, okay. because I'm out every, there. I think every other city had that. Like, Troy had it. I think Albany had it. Everybody had you didn't have it. You yeah, had no, okay. there was. I mean, there was no reason because, um, like, I'm out there. Mm. I'm out there with you. Mm. Um, I'm transparent about things. I'm willing to have the conversations that are uncomfortable. Mm. I'm willing to say this is what I can do mm. and this is what I can't. Mm. And um, I think that means a lot. That's important to have that relationship with the people. Yeah. You know? mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So how how hard was it for you to get in that position where you at? Yeah, it was. It was hard mm. for me. Um, I've always been doing things in the community. Like I worked at our youth centers, mm. our um, after school programs. I mentored. Mm. Um, you know, I worked with a population who um, is dealing with the opioid epidemic, mm. and so I was putting in the work constantly. So mm. people always see me as that like community leader, mm. um, but to transfer in to politics was a different animal because. Um, 
for me, what changed me from just being a community leader to a political leader mm. was seeing the state of our youth center mm. and how it was lack of investments, mm. it was falling apart. Mm. And I kept going to the meetings to say, hey, listen, you know, I could help out. Mm. You know, you don't gotta pay me. Mm. Like I'm willing, and they used to say like, you know, you gotta be at the table, mm. there's mm. a process, there's this, there's that, and all these excuses. Mm. So I was like, you know what? Knock, knock, I gotta get at the table. Yeah, and absolutely. then I ran for council mm. and I won that seat mm. and a ward that was only 7% um, minority mm. where they felt like I would get trounced. Mm. Um, mm. And we ended up winning with record numbers. So mm. when I came in, I was a councilman for two years and I started seeing the bigger issues mm. in my community. I started seeing um, you know, the rent prices skyrocketing, mm. the lack of investments in communities of color mm. and all the issues that Hudson has. And I was like, um, you know, the only thing stopping me from running for mayor mm. is um, fear, my mm. own fear. Mm. So I was so like- What was your biggest fear? Like, I think when you have a dream, it, it seems like it's unreachable. Mm. So for me, I always knew I would be the mayor, mm. but mm. it was like, am I gonna overcome myself mm. so that I can throw myself out there? Mm. So I was in a situation two years ago where you know I was comfortable, I'm working a good job, mm. and I'm a councilman, mm. and I just felt like something was missing. So right, right. one day I'm sitting in therapy and I'm like, man, I gotta do something. Yeah. Like, mm. I gotta fill this hole in me mm. that, um, you know, I don't want to be old and say like, ah, oh, you know, I should have did this. I should have, you that. know, I knew I could have did this. Yeah. Right. So mm. I was like, you know, the worst that could happen of me jumping out there mm. is me returning to my life as normal, mm. and the best that could happen is me answering the call for my dream. Mm. So I threw my name out there, mm. and I was like, you know what? I'm all in. Mm. Like, let's go. And you know, we ended up winning by record numbers, right. um, and it was amazing feeling. Right. 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 And that that means a lot to us. Like that's like seeing a, seeing like I got my son recording now, so it's like he know he could if he want he could be a mayor. You know what I'm saying mm -hmm. he want he could be a president. You know, yeah. So that shows hope that we ain't not just seeing you know, uh, uh, you know, white faces saying mm -hmm. like oh we can't do this because we're not white. I mean, in the, the day it's like you give hope to our community. When I saw so yeah, so brother, I gotta reach out to the brother. And how how old is your mommy actually? I'm 35. Okay. And I was 34 when um. I got sworn in. Nice, nice, okay. So I was the youngest and mm. first African American, and um, you know, even that was just like unbelievable. Mm -hmm. Like to see. That's like, historic. You, Are you yeah, the first black man. In first Hudson? black ever. Wow. Yeah. Wow. And um, mm. that made it tough when I was campaigning because there, you know, when I started to catch traction, that's when they got nervous mm. and. You know, they, they play dirty and they come after you. I was going to say that. Like, every they throw type little, of way. Like, they try to look at your yeah. past. They try to look at who you're around. They try to mm -hmm. follow you, maybe try to throw some dirt on you. Yeah. Like, yeah. And the thing is, with a rumor or anything like that, you can just say it. Mm -hmm. Like, it doesn't have to be true. Right. Um, you know, so you could put that out there to try to slow someone's momentum. Mm -hmm. So they said, you know, they made up everything mm -hmm. under the sun. I can imagine. It. Yeah, I can imagine. But, mm -hmm it's hard to create a character of me that's not me mm. in my own community right. because I grew up here. You I lived here all my life. Right. People know me. Mm -hmm. So um, all they did was make the community angry. Mm -hmm. And that's when people really got mobil people mobilized more, by right. Yeah, right. That's so. nice. That's nice. The, the powers that be going to always make a way. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. that, so, so you pretty much had a rapport with everybody before you even got in the seat. So you, you pretty much know the individuals that that's, mm -hmm. that's pretty much... Need in need of assistance or or that can assist in everybody in the community. You already know because you was yeah, out there. Yeah, because I'm out there, mm -hmm. you know, putting in that work with different agencies and mm -hmm. also, um, you know, a lot of people know my story. Mm -hmm. You know, I grew up poor. I grew up um, in a single parent household with a mom who battled addiction. Mm -hmm. I grew up where um, I'm one of four boys and I'm the only one of those boys not to go to prison. Mm -hmm. So like. Mm -hmm. I get it. A lot of these things that I'm fighting for, like ending homelessness mm. and, um, you know, getting affordable housing mm. and real employment opportunities, mm. like I lived it mm. and I still live it. So, like, I understand where it was coming from. So that hunger in me continues mm. even after I'm elected. Mm. You, you, 
he was the chosen one. Yeah, the chosen <laughs> one for the city, right? <laughs> yeah, I, I felt like it, yeah. man, because, you know, it all started in 11th grade when my teacher called me the mayor of the classroom mm. because I was the class clown and stuff mm. like that. And, mm. like, I felt from that moment I studied all the community leaders and political leaders and I just watched and watched and took everything in, everything they did bad, everything they did wrong, and like I just put it into a package mm -hmm. and added that with my charm and mm -hmm. intelligence and personality mm -hmm. and I was like, you know, I'm ready to introduce myself right. to the public. Mm -hmm. It's nice, nice, definitely good. Like I said, one, one, of, one of my good brothers that passed away recently, his name uh, Legend, That's they called him guy. Legend out here, you know what I mean? Yeah. Joel, Joel Perez, he's from Hudson. Mm -hmm. and, you know, he was, you know, Charismatic, yeah. charming. He could rhyme. He could, you know, mm -hmm. he had bars forever. You know. Yeah. And you know, my first time going to Hudson was for his for his um his um his memorial. Mm -hmm. You know, and I saw you know we went through uh was it Warren Street? Yeah. We saw you know the the, the Vincent, but I never walked through it there until about a week ago. I went back there with my with my pops, and you know when I saw the it was like one section of like you know. The hood, pretty much. The yeah, high rises. Yeah. You know, he always talked about. I'm like, you know, I'm high rise. The high rises. What's the high? I'm from the high rise. I'm from the high. Yeah. Like, everywhere he went, you know, he he stayed with Hudson mm -hmm. on his back. You know, that was his thing right there. You yeah. know, and um, it, it was just like I said, it, it, it was it was it was it was it was an honor to meet him too. You know, to, to, to be in his presence with him. You know, mm -hmm. legend. You know, and, and to see y'all was tight. Yeah, was that like, was my best friend, mm -hmm. man. You know, mm -hmm. we was like brothers, and mm -hmm. um, you know, losing him mm -hmm. in the midst of like campaigning and everything was like a huge blow mm. because like it's crazy the night that i won the election um it was like bittersweet mm. like i was so happy but at the same time i'm like man mm. this is my guy yeah, like he's right. supposed to be right. like sharing this mm. with me mm. Mm. so we went um you know had a party at one of the spots the local spots in hudson that you know everybody hangs out mm. with and like I was just sitting there, just mm. taking it all in, mm. and then somebody played one of his songs mm. over the thing, mm. and I just felt like, mm. like, I right, my boy is here, right, right, he's right, here right. with me, mm. and um, you know, a lot of those things, even with him, is like stuff that I still fight for, mm. and that's um, you know, getting uh, more uh, mental health treatment mm. in the black communities. Mm. Um, mm. A lot of times we look at that as. Um, like it's weak or right. it's just unknown to mm -hmm. us because mm -hmm. yeah, it's rare to mm -hmm. be like, yo, I'm about to go to therapy. Right, right, yeah. right. It's like it's weird for us. It's like we don't need to. We think we can help mm -hmm. ourselves. But a lot of times we, we, we help ourselves with, with, you know, with getting high, drinking them a lot. And, mm -hmm. you know, we medicate through different things without sitting back and having a conversation. Yeah. Like I even think this platform here is, 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 a, is therapeutic. You yeah, know, it is. To speak to the people, let the people give them a platform, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I do radio mm -hmm. too um, mm -hmm. in Hudson. So, like, we always say that that's like a form of therapy because it's an outlet to mm -hmm. just get, get stuff out. Absolutely. And, um, you know, a lot of times as black and brown people, we're always told, like, you know, everybody's got it bad. Like, mm -hmm. suck it up. Mm -hmm. You know, you'll mm -hmm. be all right. Mm -hmm. um, and we put that armor on, and at some point it, it, it catches up mm -hmm. to you. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that's what I'm trying to avoid for, you know, the next generation mm -hmm. of leaders coming up. Mm -hmm. It's like, you know, it's not normal to see shootings every right. day, and it's not normal for your house to be raided mm -hmm. and all those things. You got to unpack that. Like, Absolutely. It's not normal to see, you know, mm -hmm. domestic violence mm -hmm. and all of that. Mm -hmm. And for me growing up, I thought, like, man, this is life. life. Right. <laughs> Right. My, my man next door guy, he got the same mm -hmm. issue. Mm -hmm. Like this is until like I started going to therapy and I started thinking like, man, that it, this ain't not normal. That ain't like, that. like right. you're not supposed to be a little mm -hmm. kid like understanding about like you know raids mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. sales and mm -hmm. everything mm -hmm. and um, it was eye opening to me. Mm -hmm. So what uh, this this show is pretty much called Community Solution. So what do you think would be the solution for? Our young people, I know you said the therapy, what, mm -hmm. what other solutions do you think we could put in play to to, 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 to maybe uh, direct our, because we could talk about the problem all day, you know, yep. we got mm -hmm. a thousand problems, so what do you think we could put in order to, to, to have some solutions for the young brothers coming up listening and looking, or the older brothers that may need, you know, some checking or whatever the case is, what do you think would be the solutions? I think people, and like this went hand in hand with my own life, mm -hmm. is like, they need positions where they could see themselves in a leadership role. Mm. So a lot of times when we're like, oh, let's involve the young people, mm. 
they don't really involve the young people. They're like, oh, they could handle our social media stuff or right, this right. and that, but they don't put them in situations to be heard mm. and to see a future mm. in things. Because when you when you grow up, side the next person who's selling drugs or whatever, and they got the nice car, and then you got the person who. Um, you know, is trying to tell you, let's get it. Like, right. you got to go in the right direction, and they're driving, you know, some beat up. Yeah, you know, listen thing. To like, that. It's like, like yeah, not right I now. don't really want to, yeah. like, <laughs> yeah. so, like, putting them in situations where they could see people who look like them mm. in success mm. and, like, really hear how you can get to this point. Mm. Um, so, for me, like, I don't always dress up, mm. or, you know, I don't always like talk. So you got the J's on. Yeah, you know, yeah. Because right, <laughs> like okay. I'm, I'm, I'm accessible. And I wasn't sure. I said, should I put a suit on? With? I said, nah, this is my shirt. I'm just coming over there. I want to be comfortable. I got the yeah. Head. I was like, should I suit up? Whatever. But Tony, that's the same. Should I suit up? But brother's like down the earth. Mm-hmm. Man, we ain't gotta do that. We yeah. Gotta, when I'm at work, our work is gonna speak I'm, for itself. Yeah. Right. But you know, when I'm out with the people, I'm mm-hmm. a regular person, mm-hmm. and um, I think it's important for people to see that because sometimes we get introduced with, um, you know, people who have made it. And they're so different. Right. And it seems like they're talking down to you or they're using so many big words that <laughs> right. you don't even know what's going right, on. Right, right, right. And, right. like, I think, like, as a young pe- person, I used to see that. And they would bring in speakers and they'd be, like, from the hardest blocks in Compton. And, right. But they were so different that I'm like, nah, this guy is corny. I can't like, relate. Like, I can't relate to this but, guy. He uh, trying to be like them. Yeah, right, right. so, like, I, I need somebody that I could be, like, I could do what he does, mm-hmm. does and, mm-hmm. and I could do it better than him. Absolutely. And that Absolutely. that's that's what we need. Those mm-hmm. type of leaders to look that say like, I see where Kamal is at mm-hmm. and he's doing his thing, but I I, I could wipe the floor right, with him right, when I'm right, in that right. spot. Right. And Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Putting given those opportunities. Mm-hmm. So are, are y'all putting anything together for like young, you know, for young brothers that that may that may that may not have that big brother, may not have that father in the house, or may not have that person in the house to or that role model to look up to. Yeah. So like we've had a slew of mentoring programs and things like that. But I think where we're at in our community now is really having to give young people an opportunity to make money mm. and to see like what they can do with their talent and their craft. Like mm. there has to be a direction Um, because a lot of times you know the school system kills your ego Mm -hmm. Um, like a lot of things kill your ego Mm -hmm. where you're like man I can't do this it's all all made up right yeah so it's not not realistic because even everything I learned in school I didn't really I didn't it never it never added up to the success mm -hmm. after like I had to relearn yeah I got out of school I had to relearn about no financials, literacy, you no know, banking, mm-hmm. you know, uh, business, opening up business account. I had to learn all that independently. So it's like school system is. Yeah, it, and it's tough mm-hmm. because it and, and it crushes your ego a lot of times. And like you, the classes that you loved, it's because your teacher was dynamic and mm-hmm. did something to reach you, right. and you were good. Right, right. So the classes that you hated, it like if you not good at math you you hate math right, class right, 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 so right. really like bringing out what these young people are good at and showing them the money they can make in those directions mm. because that's what it all comes down to is how can they market themselves mm. um, to get to the next level right. um, you could teach me and show me a, a bunch of different things but when I go home and my lights have been turned off mm. like <laughs> I'm I'm um, immediately all of that is right. out the window. That math problem ain't gonna solve the place yeah. turn them back on. Right, right, right. So, you know, like I said, I would like to definitely collab with you on some things, you know, some some stuff, some stuff for the people with whether it's tying our cities together with tying mm-hmm. our towns or, or individuals or reaching out to certain individuals that maybe wanna, you know, learn about, you know, what I'm doing, the businesses I have, the businesses you have, maybe yeah. getting into politics. Because mm-hmm. I'm I, I'm still not too too uh too 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 too, too savvy with the politics, you know. I don't yeah. know what type of branches. I know, you know, I learned a little, a little here and there, but I'm not really like too, too, too savvy with the politics. Like I, I watched an election now. Like, yeah, are we doomed either way? <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? I, I wouldn't say we doomed either way, but um, our government has failed us mm. in not giving us options that we could be proud of. Mm. Um, you know, I think people should get out there and vote because. There's a lot riding on these votes, mm-hmm. um, especially with direct aid to mm-hmm. our communities. Mm-hmm. That's not happening right now. Mm-hmm. Um, but we don't really have candidates that 
um, we're proud of. Mm-hmm. Like right. we're not going to the polls like yeah, I can't right. wait. We're not sitting there, you know, mm-hmm. feeling that pit in our mm-hmm. stomach like oh man, like mm-hmm. I hope I hope he pulls it off. Right, like, right, right, right. So right. like we're voting based on what they give us. The less of the evils. Yeah. Right? So it's important for us to build our own leaders mm-hmm. and to stand by them. Mm. Um, one thing I say about Republicans, they are loyal. Mm. They stand by their candidate no matter what. Mm. Like, you know, all the things that Trump has done bad and said and mm. whatever, they still, still got their flag on the truck. <laughs> right, right, right. Um, but right, for right. us, mm. and usually people who are independent or Democrat, you know, they look at one mistake or one thing and then they throw that whole person away Mm. when really what people want to see is a person who's imperfect right they want to see somebody who's gonna you know take chances for them Mm. and inspire them Mm. and that's like what we got to do and we're teaching our young people about politics and things like that Mm. is to use your story to get you to the next level like Mm. i used to be embarrassed of my story like Mm. i didn't want to talk about it and Mm. now ever since like i started getting to these positions and talking about it. I've been in magazines, I've been on TV shows, like I've done all these things and people that are looking up to me identify because they're like, yo, that's my story too. I can relate, right. I can relate. Mm. So how how, how important do you think it is for us to have our own government? Like as African Americans, like instead of like going with, you know, I'm not, I'm not racist, but at the end of the day, it's like we need to empower our people because they don't see enough for that, right? Yeah. So it's like, how, how important you think it is for us to not rely on that government structure and creating our own independent, you know, our own... Yeah, I mean, I think that's important and mm. I don't think it's racist. I mean, if you look at different um, ethnicities, mm. like you have Chinatown, yeah. you have people that build with Little you Italy, know, people that right. look like them. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. So I think, like, it's important for us to build with each other as black people. Um, but at the same time, it's, it's important for us to raise these leaders mm. to be at the table mm. um, on a you know state level, mm. federal level, mm. um, and to stand behind them. Mm. Because those are the people that are going to take everything that we're fighting for into those rooms to make change. Mm. And that's the person that, if they're not doing that, we hold accountable. Mm. Um, but yeah, I think we should definitely mm. build around mm. our communities. Mm. It's important because mm. we understand the talent that we have in our communities. So gold mine, yeah. gold mine. So if mm. you make pastries, you know, mm. I'm gonna go to you. Mm. I'm gonna, you know, if you make shirts, mm. I'm gonna go to you, mm. and we build that. I like that shirt you got on right there. Look yeah, that shirt yeah. There. Shout out Three J Customs. Yeah, yeah. Um, shout out Three J Customs. Yeah. All right, that's yeah. that's your brother, right? Yeah. All right, see, that's that's how you got to keep it in the family. That's nice. And was it hands on deck? Was it? Yeah, H-O-D, mm. or hands on deck, that was, you know, our slogan. Mm. And that was basically uh, myself and, you know, a couple of my mm. friends saying, you know, I can't do this alone. Mm. Like, this has got to be a community mm. behind me and every step of the way. Mm. You know, I'm not, you know, the I don't know it all. Mm-hmm. And I can't do it all. Mm. Mm. But... As a community, if you being heard and you at the table and you given some responsibility, mm-hmm. people are like, no, like we gotta fight for him mm-hmm. and we gotta mm-hmm. make sure what he does is successful. Mm. That's important to have that community structure, mm-hmm. community. Mm-hmm. So everywhere I go, you know, I got you know a three J custom shirt on. Mm-hmm. Whenever someone mm-hmm. um, you know bashes me yeah. or something like that it's been a theme of mine yeah. to get a shirt I, <laughs> yeah, and, yeah, and yeah. like go after them like i had That's a shirt right. on the other day mm-hmm. that said um you know it's probably kamal's fault right <laughs> <laughs> and like that's a lot of what you get mm-hmm. when you at the top is like you know people look for anything mm-hmm. to blame on you or to you know, come after you mm-hmm. with and that's you know why they say heavy is the head that mm-hmm. wears the crown mm-hmm. and you know i use my people and you know my humor and mm-hmm. my things to guide me through mm-hmm. sticking to the task yeah, at absolutely. hand. So what was your like? I mean, if you mind talking about like your, your toughest battles when in your position that you're in right now, what's like the toughest hurdles that you got to jump across? Like, yeah, I think um, for me, I was just hitting my stride, um, and then COVID hit. Mm-hmm. Like I was in there like, cause whenever you start a new job, you like, man, can I do this? Like mm-hmm. I feel I can. Mm-hmm. So I was getting the jump, you know, I'm 
two, three months in, and mm-hmm. I'm like, Metam- this is something our nation has never seen before. Mm. Um, so there's not even someone you can go and ask advice, like, how mm. did you navigate the city through this? Mm. And when you have people whose lives are literally crumbling around you, mm. um, it's a lot to mm. wear on your shoulders. Mm. And literally every decision you make, someone's either going to love or they're going to hate. Wow. So you have to have that kind of thick skin to know that every decision you make is for the best interest of mm. the city. And that was kind of the hardest for me going into this. Um, but once I was able to realize, like, it's not about me, mm. um, it's been easier to mm. digest. Mm. Mm. Was there ever times you was just like, oh, it's too much for me, man. Yeah. I'm ready to just, yeah, I'm ready to just go back and... Yeah, <laughs> yeah. it is <laughs> just because... Go back and be counsel, ready to go back to be counsel position. So, you know? <laughs> the... Yeah. And and it goes hand in hand with like you know when you are at this position like I'm mayor mm. all the time, mm. like it's twenty four hours a day seven days a week like you don't clock out. Mm. So if I'm trying to buy my broccoli mm. in the middle of the night at you, the grocery store, you consider store, like a, a first responder, right? Yeah, yeah. it's because mm. you wherever you're at, people mm. are like, listen, how do you feel about this? What <laughs> right, are you gonna right, do about right, this? Right, right, right. Like, mm. and I'm just like sometimes trying to have dinner with my family right. at a restaurant, and people will come down on you right. right up, and <laughs> you have to react to that because mm. this is their moment. Like, right. oh, I voted for mm. you. Right, <laughs> like, right, 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 so right. you have to be like, yeah, like you have to hear them out. <laughs> <laughs> My and food so getting that, cold, but yeah, okay. We can get and sometimes, you know, it's tough mm-hmm. going, um, you know, at your own community mm-hmm. when there's an issue. And it's like, mm-hmm. uh, it's like, man, like, I'm, I get it. Mm-hmm. But, like, I also get, you know, the fear and mm-hmm. what's making you upset. Mm-hmm. So is is there any, 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 any departments that, or any sections of your job description that you need more, like, support for in? Um, I think right now I took on the role of police reform, which Mm. was like one of my biggest um, campaign Mm. promises. And it's crazy because when I put out my executive order, um, I put that out before the governor issued Mm. um, that everywhere Mm. has to, and the state has to have some sort of police reform Mm. and a process. Mm. So we laid that out way before, um, you know, it became like a thing. Popular. Yeah, so doing that now, I have to represent the police, Mm. but I also have to represent the community Mm. as well. Mm. So it's tough being that mediator Mm. because some people think it's either one way. Like, if you want reform, you're anti-police. And, you know, other people are like, no, like, this is what we need to build on Mm. and we need to make real reforms and build trust Mm. in our communities Mm. with, um, you know, a department that historically across the nation has taken advantage of Mm -hmm. uh, communities of lower socioeconomic Mm -hmm. means. Mm -hmm. So being that mediator and having to hear both sides and sometimes hearing things that I want to be like, you really like, you really think this? Mm -hmm. (laughs) Mm -hmm. It's tough, Mm -hmm. so... You know, me having to learn what's best for everyone. And how, how how important do you think it is that that we have police in our neighborhood that's from the neighborhood and not police from other neighbors? Because sometimes they don't know how to deal with our issues, right? Yeah. Everybody's terrified. Even us in our community sometimes be terrified, right? Because of survival, right? But you got somebody from West Bubble don't scared mm-hmm. of the neighborhood they even coming in. So it's like it's like shoot first, ask questions last, right? Yeah, and and I um I was explaining this too our police officers, like me as mayor, I'm the highest ranking elected official in the city. Mm. And when I had to meet with them in the department, like I had a lot of anxiety mm. just walking in mm. and like felt the energy, going felt the through right. and like I'm in charge here. Mm-hmm. And I'm like Still nervous. Felt the way, like, right. mm. and, you can um, imagine how. Yes, right. how somebody, you know, just who's not mm. uh, an elected official mm. feels. Mm. And, you know, a lot of my history growing up the police were the bad guys. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, they were always the ones coming in to arrest people that I care about. Mm-hmm. And really understanding that when policing was at its best was when 
people from the community knew who they were and they knew who the people from right. the, like so every arrest doesn't need to be arrest. Sometimes right. it's go home. Right, right, right. Like right. sometimes it's like I know your parents. I'm gonna go right. you know, have a chat with mm-hmm, them mm-hmm. and you know, so I wanna see more officers, especially of color mm. and that come from our communities, but I'm hesitant to send them into a culture that um isn't accepting of them. I was going to say that too because even coming from a community where you're from the hood, you still don't want to get on that force because you feel like if I get on that force, then my whole community is going to turn their back on me. Mm-hmm. Or they're going to turn me into something that I, I don't want to be because exactly. it's like a gang now. Right? Yeah. So it's, it's, it's like a, it's a thin line. Mm-hmm. So how do, we, how do we fix those issues? And put the right people in the right position. That's what I'm looking to do is change some of the culture. Mm-hmm. So there's issues that the cops don't always have an outlet. Mm. So giving them that outlet and also, um, you know, training them um, as far as how to interact with communities of color and, you know, there's different ethnicities and it's different traditions and rules Mm. when you go into those communities. Mm. So, like, you have to represent them. Your job is to protect and to serve. serve. And protect, right. You know, right. it's not to right. be this authoritarian right. where right. it's like, I got a gun, you do this. I'm going to be mean and right. Right. all of right. that because mm. when you look at them as always like they're lower and I'm the authority, mm. but then when you ask them for help when something happens, mm-hmm. like you're not going to get that right. help. Mm. Right. Exactly. Because like you just ice grilled me right. just yesterday right. and, now you want, and now you yeah. want help on, right. you know, whatever happened right, right, is, right. like, mm. it's tough. Right. So mm. I want to make sure that we're going inside and changing that culture. So when we do have diversity on the force, um, they're not caught in that thin blue line where it's like, I want to speak out, mm. but, mm. Um, you right. know, they're going to go after me right. on in the department. And that, that's pretty much what the reform is about? Yeah. Okay. And, as, you know, so there's things that right out the gate, we um, got rid of. So no knock warrants, we banned those right away. Mm. You know, chokeholds and kneeling and all of that mm. is like, you know, we're making sure that we get rid of that and they're highlighted in the policy that this is not allowed. Mm. Um, a duty to intervene, mm. we're making sure we highlight that. Mm. So if you're around an officer and um, they're doing the wrong thing, that's your job mm. to stop it Shut and up. to go to your superior mm and a limited amount of time Mm. or you can also be held liable Mm. and all of these things are what's the penalties for not following those actions termination yeah okay and um you know what i would like to see on a federal level is like you know if a cop is doing something wrong and keeps um getting demotions or you know write-ups and Mm. things like that like we should have it so that it starts to affect the entire department's pension. Right. You know what I mean? Because the pension is what they care about. Mm-hmm. That's the big thing. Mm-hmm. And once you start playing with people's money, mm-hmm. you know... Things get different. Yeah, yeah. We, we friends and, you know, but at, at the end of the day, this is my livelihood. Right. Like, you can't be doing mm-hmm. this no more. Absolutely, absolutely. So I think, that, I think that's definitely important. I think that's definitely important. So... Yeah, so I mean, like I said, I definitely appreciate you coming. We got to like, wrap it up. Man. Mm-hmm. Um, but if you want to leave any words and inspiration, you know, for the solutions to the people, I want to have you come on again, too. Yeah, yeah, so whenever you need build me. A you know, I want to mm-hmm. build the bridge between, you know, Albany and Hudson. Absolutely. Um, you know, we right around the corner from Absolutely. each other. And, mm-hmm. um, you know, I've done a lot of um, talks out here, and I know, mm-hmm. you know, a bunch of the leaders out mm-hmm. here. So. so we got, like, 150 mutual friends on the board. Yeah, yeah. Okay. All right, yeah. That's yeah. What's up. So, so, you know, however, you know, I know reach out. Brother, I know the brother legends is smiling now. Yeah, looking yeah. At us like, He's yeah, laughing brother's right now. working, yeah. yeah. We used to we had this phrase called LOL. Mm-hmm. It's called uh, living off the land. Yeah. We used, live, we used to live off the land because we had to figure it out. A lot of times we had to figure it out, right? You know, so, yeah, that's... that's my that's, guy. Yeah. Uh, we called each other with a frenzy when we were together. <laughs> yeah. Shout out to the frenzy. Shout out. It's different. His, his favorite word is different. It's yeah, different. It's different. Yeah, it's different. <laughs> Different. But yeah, I definitely appreciate it. Like I said, they got they got Wall Street. We got all streets globally. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Working. Working. Yes, sir. Stay connected, bro.